in the change of arm, see? The vocal inflection goes up where the heart is. Thank you. You're in here now, you can't leave. <laughs> You're trapped. I, I, I'd love to stay. <laughs> I'll be right there though. <laughs> it sounded like that room that was kicking on my door. I finally got up and let her out. Vanessa Hinu D. Ki I. Dimitri doesn't allow to use uh, personal names. So, Hinu uh, is one word. It actually looks like, I mean, they're written separately, but they're combined. Hinu. Uh, D is this person. Uh, um, is that uh, this person is called whatever that name is because a name is, is a, the word name refers more to a label whereas with ours um, the name would describe that person's personality and or the temperament so Sometimes you get funny, um, funny, funny translations when you translate directly to English because uh, that's not what it is. The English equivalent, like when I was a boy, like I said before, I was called Kauda uh, Hanas. Kautla, Kautla is to sit down. And Hnas is something that's ugly to look at. So the old people called me Oh the Hnas. The younger ones called me Ugly Sit Down. And um, I knew what it was, so it didn't bother me. They called me that. Uh, there was one guy, my dad called him Skunkdum. That's a skinny person but it translates to somebody who sniffs at his food before he eats. He's a slow eater. He pick up something to eat and smell it first before I put it in his mouth. That's a cautious person. What's it called? Skunk. S-K-U-U-N-K, -U -U I guess, skunk. Not, not, not skunk, skunk. Not, not skunk, yeah, skunk. Dum. Skunk-dum, skunk-dum. That's all my dad said. I'll look and see if I can find it in the dictionary. I never did look. But he said that's somebody who sniffs at his food before he eats. And that could be a chef, too. Huh? A chef. A chef always does that. They oh, they always the taste it before it goes out, too. Well, some people, though, you watch them when they go to eat, they might have a fork and they'll sniff before they put it in their mouth. Okay. But a cook is that. different. A cook just eats before he sniffs. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, they sniff and then they eat. They, the two have to be the same. Um, well, <laughs> see, the, the nose and the, the, nose, the olfactor, or what we call it for smelling, is connected also to taste. So it doesn't smell good, it probably won't taste good. <laughs> and <laughs> one, kid was asked, one, one kid was asked, do you ever eat broccoli? And he said, no, I don't like them. <laughs> he said, well, how do you know if you don't like them if you didn't eat or Oh, did you eat some? No, I don't like them. Well, how do you know if you don't like them if you never ate them? It's because he smelled them. <laughs> but anyway, this is, <clears throat> this is um, how a person would would introduce themselves. The Ilum is Gan, the Jaslam is Gan, had a las is, las, las is, not las, las is. The Ilum is Gan, the Jaslam is Gan, had a las is. Atlanet is, as the good might laughing. The long out killed laughing. I am happy to be here with you and to talk to you. The lung is you plural. Dum is you singular. So this one I'm talking to a group of people I refer to them as the lung. But dum is when I refer to one person. 
Kaun Sunga is gan Kitu Kun is gan Koga Hangas Hinu Dikya An. In Haida, I am called by three names. Koda Hangas was my name as a little boy. Oh, and then up into my adulthood, Kitu Kun was the name given when I graduated from uh, university. And this is the person who faces adversity. Then when I finished law school, I was given the name Kawan Sanga. Kawan Sanga is a man who walks into the room carrying a newborn child, somebody who brings a special day. Tak is a bald eagle, the adult eagle. Takas gusu, gusu ti kualakum. In Haida, we're divided into, in French, it's called moiti. That means the two parts. There's no question of equality, it's just two parts. There's the tak on one side and kuye, raven, on the other side. And I'm from the eagle side. Jatlanas hat udi ejam. We get our crests from historic events or from historic places. So it's not because there's some spiritual bond between the, the crest, the bird, the fish, the animal, whatever it is that's your crest. It's for some historic reason. With ours, with ours on the Alaska side, we use the word tsek. Masses people say tsek, but those are two very different things. Tsek is a little bird about, oh, it stands about this tall, that flies from New Zealand across the Pacific to to North to North America around Ida Gwai, and then it goes to the Arctic where it nests, nests its young and flies back. The other flyway goes along Asia. They go up into Siberia. They nest there. They have their young and they also fly back. Whereas the word tsak, I think, is a tree that grows in the muskeg, so I don't know the story on that part of it. But our beginning was in an area now today called Cape St. James, the southern end of Haida Gwai. There was a big cave there where people lived during the time of the ice. And then because of an incident, people separated, and the ones who became the Tatlanas went up the west coast of what's now Haida Gwai. And they stopped where there was a large waterfall flowing to the west coast. Uh, into the ocean that today it's called uh, Skidiga Channel because the ocean level came up high enough where I guess something changed. But so anyway, we use that one. So I'm from the Tatlanas, and Lana is a village. So we males have the name Lana, indicating the village we come from. Uh, with the ravens, uh, they're called Yak, Yaklanas, because they come from the village of Yak, Yaklanas, and they're the raven side. Um, Woodrow Morrison Jr. D A J D Inu D Yaat Hat I Kit Yaam. In English language, I'm called Woodrow Morrison Jr. D A J D. Yahats, the word yahats can either be iron or knife. So they're the people of the iron knife. They brought the iron knife, the Europeans. But there were other names for them too. Um, when the Europeans first came in, there were no white women. They didn't bring any women with them. And so they were supposed to be King George was the great white father. That's what they referred to their king as. 
So the first time they saw it was a white woman, they thought maybe that was George's wife. George's Janas is what they call the white woman, George's wife, King George's wife. So she might be the mother of all the white people. And then on the U.S. side, instead of, it was George Washington, so the white women were called Washington Janas. Like, um, rather than Washington, Washington Janas was on the, on the American side. But, um, so anyway, the European name, Ya'at, Ya'at Hatai, it's Hatai, it's down here. Um, the Ao Chayang Hinu Hadkit, Virginia Cloud Hinu maiden name, by Nanga Pidan. My mother in Haida language was called Chayang. In English, her maiden name was Virginia Cloud. Wagyan, Wagyan, the Hansanan, Woodrow Morris, and Kyagan, is Gantla, Dai Hakit Kyaan. My father uh, was called Woodrow Morrison. And it used a past tense, kyakan, indicating that he's no longer alive. In Haida, he was called Pladai. Pladai was uh, a big man inside. Uh, he was chief of the brown bear house that he passed on to his nephew. He nan o paiola na katla, na mhenban das, hinudi nan kyakan. My grandmother, Viola Natcong, Nat, Nakatla Morrison, was called Deep Sea Rolling Wave. She had two names. The other one was Sky Toai Paywas. Sky is your hand, Toai is oil. Paywas, uh, it, it describes something that's kind of like hanging or dangling or something. Anyway, something precious. So she had precious healing hands, but she was all called also deep sea rolling wave that talks about this thing when it reaches the full power before it breaks. These two might want to come in. Hmm? Just wave them in. I did, but uh, uh -huh. I was going to stop you for a minute so that they could walk in. Hikta Pantla is to an agent. My hometown is Hikta Handlai. By the fresh water where all the people go to eat. In English it's called Heidelberg. The long ayakudanga is gan the long atlugu lakasam. I respect you highly and want to say high words to you. So the way it would sound if I didn't stop. The quailing is gan the jaws and is gan hat at lasses. Atlan it is at he could not laugh him. The long art kill laugh him. Collins and I is gan. Kitu on is gan. O the hangars hino dick your arm. But Akas Kusu dick all laugh him. That long as hat I would be agent. Woodrow Morrison Jr. Hino D. Yahat Hat Aikit Hat Aikit Yaam. He out Chayam Hino Hatkit Virginia Cloud Hino Maiden Name by Laga Hidan. Wagan de Tum Hansanan Woodrow Morrison Kyagan. His Gantla Dai Hatkit Kyagan. He non who viola in a catla. So anyway, that's what it would sound like. Um, it sounds like I'm choking. 
Galakaskalan. <laughs> so, anyway, I was going to ask you how to make some copies of some phrases, but I don't know if I brought them with me. Statements and commands. This is quite a bit. Huh? Oh. Yeah, we can we can go to that one. Skunuk dung hinu di kiang. Kya ang. Kya ang. Kya ang. See, that's why that's why we have these accent words. Kya ang. Kya ang. Di. When you put the accent mark, it means your voice goes up, then it comes down, and then it goes up again. See my name. Say this part, just the ng. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Like if you're something tastes good and you say mmm. It's like French. Uh, mm. Yeah, so you just yeah. say mmm. Mm. Yeah, mm. Vietnamese. It's like mm. Korean. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> from where the sound goes? From so, um, this, this. From ng, there? This N N G is very common oh. throughout our whole language. Oh. Mm. So learning to say mm. Mm. and even when you say yes, it's either um, um. or mm. Mm. Um. Mm. 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 So kawan sama, kawan sama, kawan sana. Inu di kya um. Inu di kya um. Kya um. Kya um. Mm. So it comes out your nose rather than yeah. um. 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 So, so that that's uh, um. that's a that's a. Um. Uh, oh, when I was reading through this here for you too, there's a whole lot of the ng sounds in there. Uh, Yeah, yes. one page is just a bunch of ends. So it's the song. And then these principles of healing. Uh, what I've written in there is, please note, I got these from the stories and other teachings, teachings given to me over the last 70 years. When one is very ill or badly injured, we do not pray for restoring that person because we do not know whether that is meant to be. Instead, we say, the Big spirit in the atmosphere, my spirit calls. Take a look and see what I need. And what I was explaining to Tom, uh, when I talked about we draw a straight line to the highest values, of the community. Uh, when a child is born, its whole universe just explodes. It doesn't know anything. It's just some inborn, innate things. It knows how to feed, how to breathe, and so they're just some basic functions. But it's a long period of learning, and, and sometimes with children, learning is very fast. But you do well up until puberty, and then your world shifts again because now the brain is changing. And so now it's trying to find out everything it possibly can about everything else. And so a lot, a lot of times that's misunderstood as being rebellious or argumentative, uh, when they're really just trying to find out where they live. Where, where they are. 
then finally when you pass that part of it, we'll say into adulthood, uh, you've gone from being absolutely certain about everything. It's like when my son said it, pop is true. What's true? When you become a teenager, you really do know everything. Well, and then you get to adulthood. Now it's thoughtful uncertainty because now you're trying to figure out other things without being absolute. So in Haida, it says that when, um, when we first came into being, Kadu Hagui, Kadu Hagui, what that, I don't know the exact translation, but the way it was described to me is that instead of being created, ours says that nothing existed until it was brought into the light, into light. If you turn off all the lights, nothing exists. What we don't, we don't really see physical things, we see light reflection. And it, so it says when we came over the horizon into the, into the light, that there was a long period, or say some, somewhere over here we came into the light. Then, it wasn't a straight line, but I'll use a straight line. There's a long time in learning to be human. Our bodies were different. Uh, we were more like a flock of birds, sort of helping each other, but not really. Uh, birds will come to the defense of one another, like crows, some of them, other birds may not. But anyway, it just says we were sort of like birds because we, to, to escape predators, we sleep in trees. And um, then something changed. And the way I understand it is humans start eating animals small animals, and due to a fire or something, they found a bone that was cracked in the marrow, and they tasted that, and it tasted good. So that was one of the things that they started doing, and they said, this is what caused us to start changing, to become human. So now, when we went, it was called, a, I think it was called, Watch Guac Shaguyan Quantum, this is before the last ice age. Um, everything happens in now um, 52,000 years, I think, or 26,000 year cycles. So 26,000 years ago, and 78,000. So this was when it began to watch for Hegri and Quantum. This is when a super volcano exploded. And we were, we were in this continuum here, still living under trees and stuff, but there was, it was, a, it was a, a protected, like a huge, a long bay. It was protected by high long rock walls, cliffs, and there was plenty of food. So people began to develop into humans. And then uh, 52,000 years ago was when, uh, I think it was toward the end of an ice age that started here, and then another one here, and then the last one started here 26,000 years ago. And prior to that, this is about when we arrived in what's now North America. That's right about here. And that's when we became people. It says that when we first, there was a long period of learning to be 
be human and then learn to be people because it says that when we got to this point that as each people came into being they're put on the land that looked like them and given a language that sound like that land it described all the things on that land in that land and we're given the ceremonies on how to maintain the balance so each people developed their own languages they have, and even though uh, very many similarities but once we became people then we started developing societies and so maybe it happened differently for different peoples around the world but it says I mean ours says this is when 52,000 years ago is when it started happening for us um, when we start developing plans and but I don't know I'm, this is only what I've been told. And uh, so then after we got to become people, that's sort of like we've, we've gone through this period of three teens where we're spending time just trying to stay alive and finding out everything. And then we become sort of teenagers. And then we get to, get to this point, And this is where we become mature. So now, like with our children when they reach a certain point they have to start making their own decisions of course we'll be there to guide them but it's the way it seems to me is one people say that god boom you're created you got a language, you got everything all in one shot. You know, fully involved in everything. You know all about gold and silver and all those other things. But ours says, no, it took a long time to get to the point where you started forming society. And this is, I don't know, somewhere around here where we started developing religions and priests and priesthoods or whatever. But we didn't. We didn't have that. Um, so anyway, when we talk about this healing, uh, we don't use the term creator. Uh, I, I, I question a lot of what is in the Christian Bible, not to say that none of it's true. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, that the King James Version of the Bible was King James didn't like what was in the Bible so he wanted to written the way he wanted yeah. that's where we get all the these and thou's and, and all those language came out of King James so it's been translated a number of times from the original Aramaic then it went to uh, I guess the Greeks and the Romans and whomever else, the Arabic, they keep translating. And you can see just simple from ours, when we translate our language, that doesn't use English equivalents, it has a whole different meaning. So I think there's a lot more to religion than simply blind faith. In, in one of the uh, books in the New Testament, there's a story or a parable about how the word was um, written and then how the word was copied and then copied again and translated and then copied again and they all started arguing whose version was the most correct and they could never agree so they wrote another version that was supposed to come with all the versions but they ended up just fighting about who had the right word because they lost the original word and yeah. they prophesied this is what would happen through the word. And it's happening today. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many denominations do we have? Right? Church, Catholic, right? You got Protestant, you got Anglican, you got Lutheran. Part of it too was uh, before Christianity were the agnostics. See, when the uh, ancient Hebrews were wandering around trying to find their place, 
because of wars, almost all of their writings were destroyed. But they did save a bunch of them in a cave. And so they went back and started rewriting them. And the parts that were missing, they just went by what their memory said. And so some of these different um, gospels were really just people's memories of things. So what I'm saying is that when we reach this point, it's up to us to make our own choices. It's not up to me to say somebody else's belief is wrong. Because when I say you're wrong, I'm saying I am right. And so rather than say somebody's wrong, I just say, well, I, I choose a different way. And this is what's right for me. I can't say what's right for my children, for my partner, for anybody else. It has to, I have to be able to live with me. And so when people threaten me, if I don't do it that way. Well, people say, hey, if I'm uh, doing it right or doing it wrong, I say, everyone deserves a work off to the right. Mm -hmm. So if I'm overly right, you're going to probably push me over anyway. If I'm making a mistake over and over, you're going to try to correct me, even though I will correct and I'll only make different mistakes from now on. Well, what I tell people is the greatest civil right is the right to be stupid. I claim that. <laughs> <laughs> no. So anyway, there's, there's no bliss in there. So anyway, this is kind of wandering far afield. And anyway, Nisla, or healing, be your life begins the first time you laugh at yourself. There's many people who can't laugh at themselves. Um, they see it as a weakness. They see it as a flaw. I've read something, this person said, I was ugly until I described it, until I discovered all my flaws. <laughs> now I like me. <laughs> well, if, uh, people that encourage me to, to have a drink with them, I'll come on and be you for once, laugh at yourself, yeah. you know? But I don't drink. So how can I do it without drinking? <laughs> <laughs> and then now I'll swing on a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Nisla begins with a song. The universe is composed of harmony. Every medicine has its own song. That song must be sung in order for the full measure of the medicine to be experienced. When we sing our songs, we call our ancestors to us. They're always with us, but sometimes we need their specific attention. And when I was a kid, I spent time with a whole bunch, with, with a group of old men, and my grandfather died when I was, I was only three years old. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't have my grandfather around, but his clan brother lived across the road, a man named Billy, Billy Hamilton, and so I had him. And then there was a whole bunch, and also my grandmother, my dad, my dad's, my father's mother. So when she would 